slashing his throat and for, forcing full marijuana plants down his throat. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's a slippery slope. Next. It's a yeah. slippery slope. It's, it's the same It'll way. It'll take a few weeks for that to happen, too. It'll happen uh, immediately. A few weeks. That's optimistic. Yeah. I, have it, I have it down to hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you're forcing people who don't want to take uh, marijuana. You're actually before. The government will be forcing them yeah. to uh, take it. And then you create a black market. I, like, I always like the scheme ones that involves uh, guys in vans going to Nevada and buying yeah, things. Here's the problem. It As back. it is, we got guys like Zachary, who's a full-blown marijuana addict, using it. And no one is really monitoring it and really? exploring this. Zachary? Carefully. Yeah. Wow. His name's Zach, and he's calling from Santa Barbara, so he really didn't stand a chance. It was like, my, someone just handed you a bong when you were born. <laughs> there you go, buddy. They basically did. There's a bong. Yeah, we had it. We had his bong bronzed, actually. Your and, back pain no, will magically go away, Zachary. Car, just just FYI, that, I if you could maintain sobriety for about three months, that back pain will get a lot better. Well, well, <laughs> <laughs> well listen, you live, first off, you're going to live in Santa Barbara. You might as well just smoke weed anyway. Wait, there's nothing going on. Just enjoy the view. Yeah. Enjoy the sea air. But uh, would you consider yourself a, a marijuana addict, Zachary? Oh, I, I definitely am. I, I mean, it's, I've been smoking marijuana for four years. I only became a patient this past year. It just helps me with a lot in my life, more than just a little bit. And it's something yeah. I do recreationally. It's something I don't do at parties. Uh, no, it, I, I know. It's, it's like giving, you know, opiate or, or methadone or buprenorphine to an opiate addict. How'd you hurt your back? Uh, lots of labor, working as a courier for... No, uh, he doesn't have a back end. No, you don't have a back end. Yeah, I'm says, part of the job corps right now. I am cutting line on the Angeles uh, Crest, so... Wow, how really? weird is that? Are you really on the Angeles Crest? No, well, I'm in. Uh, I, I'm on the San Bernardino National Forest. I'm, I'm cutting line up there with the uh, with the forest crew up there. I'll tell you, you are with the uh, the elite, the uh, who's who of uh, young felons from this yeah. country. Yeah, yep. we're working with uh, we're working with people in the prison program. So that's awesome. But wow. <laughs> people, people job corps, it's it's prison with a shovel. Is basically what it is. You, you got to admire Zachary too. Zachary, do you consider yourself marijuana? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it does. I'm completely throwing out. Uh, by the way, uh, cutting fire lines when you have a chronic back problems <laughs> got to I be. A, that's a tough gig. On the other hand, you're 22. You've never had an injury, yeah. so you yeah, don't the, have the, any the, back the problems. The opiate effect in the in the pot causes the back pain. I know it's a stretch for you to believe, but I treat this all the time. Yeah. And uh, you'll be surprised how the pain magic goes away. You get off all drugs for about three to six months. Well, look, I, I'm I'm really starting to believe that back pain is almost just a description of an emotional condition that sort of ends up in your back. I, I do know it firsthand. You I used to have a lot of back pain. Yeah. Uh, when you're depressed. You're depressed, you get you get a lot of I, it's it's not made up. I mean, you, you feel it. Oh, it hurts. You yeah. can't get out of bed yeah. some mornings. Yeah. You can't turn your head. You get oh, yeah. these kinks in your neck and the pinch nerves and whatever you want to call them, stingers, whatever it is. But it's not because they're discs pushing on the nerve. It's because of no. something in the central nervous system. Yeah, but look, if you can give yourself diarrhea through uh, uh, being stressed. Yeah, agina, yeah. or if you can, you can vomit because yeah. you're stressed out, or you, you can headaches because you're stressed. Whatever you want, Why you can certainly you pinch your neck up. Of course, of that's course. that's nothing. All right, Tom Burbine here, uh, one of like I said, the largest uh, Dodge Ram retailers in uh, Southern yeah. California, and uh, teaches. I'm just going to say astrophysics. It, it's it close enough, cooler, and it's close enough. He's out here. He dropped uh, 15 grand just to hang out with uh, us for the uh, tsunami relief. You're not relief giving fund. him a chance to talk. No, I Why? Don't know, buddy. He's tired. No, I, I'm just enthralled just to be in the, your presence. Is uh, Can I do some ass kissing? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Wait, wait, hold on a second, Tom. I want you to write blah, blah, blah. Just make, <laughs> make some notes. Make a note right at I want, I want you to really sit down with your thoughts for a second. I'm going to give you a piece of paper. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Because we got to take a break. Okay. But uh, Tom's going to do some world class ass kissing when we come back. Hello? Uh, this is Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline, we'll be right back. Yeah, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. -E Tom Burbine is here tonight. Tom invested... 15 large to the uh, Tsunami Relief Fund. Very generously, he is uh, out here from, uh, I don't know where, in Massachusetts. And uh, he's, a, he's a brilliant guy. And don't believe me. You don't think he's brilliant? Well, just listen to the uh, praise he's going to heap on moi. <laughs> 
Yeah. Adam, you are a comic genius, and, yes. I, and I think it's a travesty that the entertainment community has never recognized your brilliance. You've never been nominated for an Emmy, mm. Academy Award. I went on <laughs> the Internet Movie Data Place, and the awards and nominations is blank for you. What, really? No Academy Award? I didn't get the <laughs> nod this year? No Emmys? No anything because Jimmy Kimmel has won he won an Emmy and nominated for Emmy for being host of the Ben Stein oh. so he, had, he has a link but you have not no link for yeah. awards and nominations and right. um, hold on a second uh, first off I beg to differ because we won a, a shine award that's right we did three of them Al although you probably find that on their Caroline Ray's name because her name was prominently displayed on the thing so yes, much so yes. that I had to take a sharpie and take her name off because people don't think it's my award also I did get a not an award but a certificate for uh, finishing a, a pig's trough at Farrell's well done. in uh, well 1974. Done. So see? that should have been listed on there. But okay. go, keep going. It's, it's a plaque. It's suitable for framing. Uh, it's not something I like to brag about, but I did finish it off. Just yeah. a little help for my stepdad. And, and let me, uh, you want to know the funniest joke I ever heard you tell on the show? Yes, <laughs> okay. I would. But hold on. If it's not funny, I'm going to kill myself because that's my funniest joke. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. All right. You and uh, Dr. Drew were talking about how prevalent uh, oral sex was in high school. Mm -hmm. And you, Adam, had the classic one-liner. You said if you were getting oral sex in high school, you'd be printing out leaflets. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, that's a, yeah. That's a and, I, and I laugh uh, every time. It was time. a joke, by the way. He's serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's something like Bob Hope or Jack Benny would never have thought of, never have told. <laughs> no. <laughs> Those hacks. No, they don't have my genius. So they do probably have a couple Emmys and maybe an yeah, Oscar yeah, uh, yeah. In, the, yeah. in the closet. And, and if you were yeah. not on the show, I would have probably bid $20, $30, $50. Wow. Yeah. But, uh, See, it's yeah, but because you were on the show, I, I, I did the bidding. Thank 1%. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and, you. And you got to remember, this 15000 is approximately about, for this year, about 30% of my salary. So pretty much I'm going to be wiped out financially for years or maybe decades. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting, you know, I was, uh, I was inspired by Tom's uh, can-do attitude. And when I learned, now here's the thing. When, when, when we found out, we started talking two months ago about this raising money for the uh, tsunami relief thing, I thought, well, first, a uh, uh, winning bid for this show is going to be fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks. That was uh, that was my first thought. Yes. Uh, my second thought was going to be, we're we're going to get some trust fund baby he comes in here. We're going to get some guy. He either uh, either he owns uh, he owns the nudie places down by the airport, and he's making money hand over fist because he got uh, clipped on his uh, Harley by. Uh, buy a shell truck and he's uh, made millions in you know in court or something. I just thought we we're going to have to I didn't know we we're going to have two hard working guys, yeah. two guys who know the value of a dollar yeah. coming in here and when I found out that uh, Tom basically is uh, donating the amount he makes uh, teaching for a summer session in his, his uh, astrology class, I, I was I was inspired and then I thought, you know, so my first impulse is wow, this guy is uh, not you know, it's not like he makes a million bucks a year and he's parting with a very small percentage of his yearly income. He's parting with almost 30 percent, as he said, of his annual intake. And and he said, I believe he said when we were talking to him, it's just something he wanted to do. He had a, it's a, one of your life yeah, goals. Yeah, lifelong guy. Once I heard the, the auction, I said, this is the only way I'm going to get on the show. I'm not a writer. I don't have big breasts. I'm not an author. <laughs> I'm not a musician. So I said, and I just said, this is mine. So I decided I'm going to bid whatever it was. I was going to take it, and I was able to get it. But there's a, there's a, there's a thing that's sort of inspiring in, in that he just, Tom had a goal and had a dream, and he, he went through life, or, or his, his, his trajectory in life is, I got things I want to do, and I'm going to do them. And he waits for the opportunity. Instead of sitting around and thinking about worst-case scenarios and what could happen and what could go what, wrong. What are the other life goals? Um, I'd like to... Um, a I, I, I would like to yeah. have a... <laughs> A uh, link on uh, the Internet Movie Database. Do something so I have some type of link on there. And IMDb. I always, yeah, IMDb. Why don't you shoot guy. Drew? Yes. And then, uh, <laughs> I think I would get you on. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, yeah, my trial. And then um, I also I always wanted to write a book, so I hopefully it can be on Amazon. I can write a book on asteroids. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, you could write a book on we're asteroids. We're all the stuff we were at. I think a lot of people would be interested in the stuff we were talking about at dinner. Yeah, yeah, well, what yeah. you got to do is you got to come up with some crackpot theory that yes. you can't really support, but it's got to be a real doomsday not, theory, not and a, then you make the you make the you make the not circuit. Not so much as a headline, a headline yeah. out of it. And yeah, then, but and I mean, you, science you, follows. It, it, you you say we sell it, they sell it when you're going to be on. Uh, All right, what's the title? CNN. Gonna be? What's the title going to be? 